I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Sherry. And this is our cat, Lily. This is Cinder. We've got the truck. We've got the trailer. And we're ready for our RV travel quest. Good morning. It's uh, what, uh, November, and we're still at Fidalgo Bay. And we're still a year out till we do our full timing. But today, um, it's getting colder, so I gotta make sure our insulation on our watering is okay. And I'm gonna empty some tanks, and I thought I'd just kind of give you a day in the life of a part time uh, RVing. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you kind of some of the things I'm gonna do this morning, and then today, later today, we're gonna go to a really cool park and uh, get the dog out of here. She's going crazy. And uh, have a little fun. So, anyway, here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, empty tanks and then I'm gonna check my insulation and plug in my uh, electrical and I'll show that to you in a minute. Okay, one of the things I got to do on uh, Montana is we have a really cool boom system for our uh, um, septic system. And uh, so I'm gonna, first of all, uh, open the black tank and let it drain out. And I also have a, sep a separate, um, I also have a separate uh, watering system uh, that goes to the uh, septic so I can uh, rinse it at the same time and I don't have to disconnect my regular water. So here we go. Okay, first thing we're going to do is turn on the water. Now you can hear the water running, and down here is our tanks. I'm going to pull the black tank, and we should hear it running down here in a minute. Yeah, one of the cool things about uh, the Montana is that everything is here in the control panel right here. So right here is my septic um, down below here, and that water is going into the tank as I'm emptying, so it's flushing. This is my fresh water. And if I was winterizing, I'd use the system above. The other thing that's really cool about the uh, Montana is this switch right here. When you're uh, parking this thing and you want to make sure all your power is off, flip the switch and you're not going to be killing your battery if it's sitting here for a month. Anyway, once again, I love a Montana. Another thing I do um, when I'm flushing the black tank is I've let it empty. I have water flowing into it. but. Uh, that's not enough. So what I'll do is actually close the tank and let some fresh water fill up in it as it's doing its rinse out and flush it a couple of times to get all the extra toilet paper and stuff that gets all clogged up in there. So anyway, so I'm going to be closing it right now. And that's my black tank right there. And right here I got water going into the tank. And I'm going to let it fill up for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to pull this black tank again and flush it a couple more times and then when I'm all done I'll be um, flushing the gray tank and the other gray tank that's uh, up towards the back uh, to make sure the hose is all cleaned out. Okay so I'm in line to fill up for a couple of minutes and you luckily don't have to sit through this. Now I'm going to pull the tank again. So I'm pulling the black tank which is going down in here and a big flush in there And we'll do that a couple more times. Another thing uh, that I've been taught is a little trick to do with your blocks when you're uh, stabilizing your RV. Now, Montana has a great um, hydraulic system, and so everything's automatic. But if you look below, you'll see that we have blocks under here. But you see how I have it going one direction? If you look down at the other end, it's going the other way. And if you go down farther, you see each one rotates to a different way and if you go towards the back you'll see this one's rotated the other way too so that little trick is used to help stabilize your uh, RV make it less tippy so uh, just one little trick that I was taught works out really good and it does seem to stabilize the RV Okay, so now I've got the black tank emptied and I've flushed it a few times. I'm going to go shut off the water. So right here 
is uh, where I have the water for the black tank. I'm going to shut that off. I'm no longer putting water into the tank. I'm going to close the black valve right here. So now, in the uh, Montanas, we have two gray tanks. One is up here uh, by the tires, and the other one's right here. So the first one I usually do is the one by the tires. So here we go. Right here, pull it. You can hear it going. And the reason we do that is now that I've done the black tanks, this is a good opportunity to kind of clean out the, the, the hoses with the gray water. Uh, it takes all the hairs and toilet paper and stuff that gets stuck in the uh, pipes and flushes it out. Makes it a little more, uh, <laughs> a little bit more clean. So I'm going to flush the first tank, then I'm going to flush the second one, then I'm all done for today. And uh, I try to do this every week if we can. I do the septic maybe every two to four weeks, um, let it build up a little bit. Otherwise you'll get clumping, so you want to always get lots of juices in the tank so it'll dissolve and break down. So, uh, and keep adding water to the tank and keep putting additives into the tank, keep breaking that stuff down, otherwise you'll get build up. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm checking all the insulation on my my uh, water. I have a wire that runs through next to the um, water uh, hose and it's now plugged in and I'm just making sure I got it insulated well and so I'm pretty much ready for the winter. Uh, when I'm not using the RV we shut off the water anyway so there really isn't that much water in the hose but for what li little ho water there is with the wire going through it with a heating coil um, it'll keep it from uh, freezing. I'm going to pull the second gray water tank, which is right next to the black tank. Pulling that. And if you look down here, you'll hear it come flushing through. And that way I know I've got uh, at least this gray water going through there and I'm getting some of the uh, septic stuff out of there. So, still it's not sanitary, you should always wash your hands and everything else or wear gloves. Um, I wash up immediately. So anyway, that was my uh, process for that. And after we get done with all this, we get to go play today. And I uh, thought we'd take you out to the park. So one of the other things we got to do today is go get some protein. So here we go. Cinder, one side. Cinder, let's go. One side. So I'm just doing a uh, one tank today, and so pretty simple process. My tank, I'm actually got the other tank hooked up, so I actually don't have any pressure on this one. So I'm gonna make sure I shut it off. <coughs> Bring the camera around over here, and and wash it in. the tank off. Now why I'm going to get fuel, I actually leave this door open because uh, we do get some fumes and I don't like them to accumulate in here so I'm going to leave this door open and let it air out. This tank's empty. now is uh now that i got the propane tank i'm just going to take it over to it i fill it and it's not heavy now but once it's filled up it's pretty heavy so i gotta go to the office remember at fidalgo we only pay um 85 dollars a month to be here plus that's electricity too and uh on the special um winter rates and when we are here on the weekend which is almost every weekend we pay uh 
It was $17 a month, now I think it's $20, 21 So uh, I have to go pay for that. So what I do is I go in, tell them that I want to get propane. I'll be taking my truck over by the tank. They'll send a guy over to fill it. Once they fill it, I'll have a bill. I take that bill in to the office and I pay for my two nights here. And uh, get all squirted up with them, bring the tank back here to the RV and then uh, plug it back in and I'm all done. And then we'll try to go with park again. All right, talk to you later. Delivered into my spot. I didn't mean to do that. No, I understand. So, uh, what are we doing? I hope you think I'm nice. For propane and two nights of uh, staying here, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right, can I have your, your signature right there on that line? Totally. Yeah, didn't know. Oh. That works. Hidden in plain sight. You're camouflaged. <laughs> and here's your copy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so now we got the. Uh, all the errands done we're gonna go play today so we're gonna pack up the dog and take a ride over to the park and show you some really great places over here in Anacortes got a nice little trail on it but uh, apparently it's locked out you can see down there so we had to park uh, kind of farther out and uh, we're gonna unleash the dog here in a minute and go for a walk and show you around
So this is the Maiden of Deception path. Now from here, there's a trail that goes around a little um, point here, so we're going to follow that around and uh, do some exploring, so you can see the trail right there. Here we go. here on the point and for November in uh, Washington state this is a very rare nice day it's pretty cool but if you can see the water in the background no wind it's just beautiful out here and uh, basically you're looking at the Strait of Juan de Fuca and uh, we're uh, actually right by Whidbey Island and Deception Pass and uh, you can see it's just a beautiful beautiful day and uh, definitely have cold ears but uh, it's nice here so uh, enjoy I hope you enjoyed our little uh, uh, hike here in the park and uh, we'll show you some other things we do on a weekend at Anacortes bye for now <laughs>